Well, uh, welcome to this, our 30th film in our series Button of the Month. It's like a little anniversary doing the 30th film. Uh, we're filming, we're trying to do these films uh, right before it's coming out. Uh, this time we're a little early and the reason is that I'm going fishing. I'm on my way to the, to the very south of uh, Norway to fish a river I never fished before, the Suldalslågen. And uh, looking forward to it actually, it's real with with some big fish and um, uh, of course we'll do a film so you'll see it and uh, see what I think. Big river, big fish, I like it. Okay, so uh, today uh, we're gonna tie a version of a fly that's been with me very, very long time. And actually I was looking in my little collection of flies that meant quite a bit for me. And uh, I found a few of those. Uh, the reason that there are quite a few in my collection is that I caught quite a few big fish on this black doctor flush. And like most of my pattern, it's been changing over the years. And what you're going to see now, what I'm going to tie now is, uh, is, uh, is a new, uh, or fairly new, it's got a couple of years or a few years. Uh, it's been in my boxes a few years, but I have some old ones here. I found one. Uh, it's uh, a black doctor flash with a little bit of orange in front with an orange heron hackle in front. And, and uh, on this one, I um, caught a sea trout on 10.7 kilos, which is what in pounds. 24 pounds. Uh, it's a um, special fly, but I also found this and, and maybe I actually showed you this fly before. It's uh, it's the fly that caught me uh, my 21.9 kilo salmon uh, back in the 80s. And at that time uh, I tied soft hair it was in the beginning of the fox hair area. Uh, I tied, tied, tied them around, uh, but I, I found out that they balance quite bad if you don't have them like that. And it's actually probably 25 years ago. I last time fished one with a, with a wing around like this, but it's the same pattern. Uh, it's the same fly actually. It's got it's a black fly with a little fluorescent in the back, uh, with quite a bit of flashable, with a quite a bit of sparkle to it. So a black sparkling little fly. And uh, today I'm gonna tie it. Since this is a fly I fish mostly fall time, I'm gonna tie it on our B to T's. Got one sitting right here now. Uh, and the BTT give us a very light fly. And um, I think it's essential for a fly to be very light, especially on the low water. If you have a, a, a fly that's tied in the regular way, uh, it's not gonna move and uh, swim as good as a super light fly. And it's actually with our BTTs that they are lighter than a regular plastic. It sounds crazy since it's tied on brass, but it's so thin brass, so it doesn't almost weigh anything. Okay, so let's start this tying. And uh, I hope you like it. And of course you can vary um, colors in this, uh, this, um, this kind of uh, new uh, techniques uh, with the BTTs and TTTs. I mean, Black Doctor is a fly that's been with us, one of James Wright's flies, he's been with us, what, since the, uh, not the last century, the century before, it's a fly with 150 years or 100, and 100 years, maybe. Uh, on on uh, it's been with us so long, but um, you can tie 
other kind of patterns, of course, with the same technique. Okay, too much talk, more coffee, and let's start tying. So since uh, uh, since Black Doctor is a fly, it's my favorite on the, in the Doctor family, by the way. Since it's a fly with a bit of red to it, uh, it's got the classic red head, and we're going to keep that. But I'm going to tie it on a red uh, BTT, and uh, I'm going to do it with a black extra small tubing. That's a bit too long. It's easier to handle this shorter one. And I start by just melting a little edge on this uh, Fitz tubing. And I hold it up like this to make it open up so it doesn't melt down <clears throat> and cover the hole. Put it through and it should be tight. People tell us fits doesn't fit but it's ridiculous because it should be super tight so this cannot start moving on the plastic it needs to be fixed if it's fixed in a hard way we're going to end up with an extremely durable fly okay and i'm tying with our, my 12-0 uh, sss thread and uh, i fasten the thread onto the BTT like this and uh, to make a strong fly you should try to tie as much as possible on the metal part uh, since the extra small is so thin if you if you work out a few millimeters it doesn't matter but if you're too far out it will be a little unstable like this so try to tie up here Sometimes I put a little glue on the thread there to make it stay on the BTT because it can be slippery But I'm not going to do that today and the simple reason is that I've been tying too much and I had too much open Glue bottle so and it's my last one. So I'm almost out of glue Okay, so on this one you can do it in a few different ways I'm going to do it now where I start by, by putting some flash and the first wing before I do the hackles. You can do a first hackle first close to the BTT and then add the other wing. But since we're doing an ostrich hackle, we want it not to be tied down too much. That's why I do it this way. And as you can see, I work with our Angular HD and on a small fly, it's a quite heavy flash. And I, I do more than I normally do. Maybe twice as many strands, put them on and double back uh, one or two turns. Make sure this now is spread. So I have fibers like half the diameter of the of the BTT. If I have this one down below, I can take it away. And as before, on all my flies, I never cut, cut flush like this because then they become even and they go together in the water. I want them to swim and I start fairly short and I cut and pull so I get this tapered and I can wet this and I'll put it on the next fly. Too long? Yeah, maybe. Take away a little bit and uh, if it's still too long, I can work that uh, after the fly is ready. Okay, and I'm going to do a, a wing with the only one color to it. And uh, I'm going to divide it into two hair bunches. And uh, that's good for my second one. And I look at the hair, and as you can see, it doesn't really matter what hair you use as long as it's super soft. And the good thing with the, with the BTT is that it will move water, create turbulence, and um, I will get a fly that can't collapse, meaning that 
uh, it's uh, I can use super soft hair but without uh, and without it's being a risk that it will collapse and I try to take everything from my regular tying desk here every time and I always forget something and I have to ask Linda to get my brush it's right there a couple of hours ago I was tying there for other flies for my trip thank you my friend uh, I used the brush all the time to untangle the hair so I pull it over the bunch of hair like this and when I've done that it's very easy to see what I have and the strands are not coming across each other too much and I can see this is not very tapered so what I do is that I move my fingers up to half length and then I pull out some of the strands to get the taper like this and um, this means I need to have a hair bunch that is longer than what I actually tie in. And I put this on, making sure this is now shorter than uh, the ready fly. And I tie it in, few turns, make sure this is not coming down too much on the side here. Then I can lift it a little bit. I don't want to have it like the old flies uh, wound all around. I want it to be on half the diameter of the of the BTT, and then I just cut it off. And normally, I use angel hair inside the wing because angel hair is. Uh, Shim Hogan's fantastic invention that I use in almost all my flies. But in this one, I'd, uh, I use the HD instead, and I can even take a few strands of the, uh, the Angel Air HD inside the wing. And the reason for this is that I want this fly to really sparkle. So I'll uh, put on up one or two turns and I double back spread it out and I get a little more sparkle inside the wing you can of course just put the, some extra angular hair HD under the wing because it's uh, fishing it the way I do uh, where you have the sparkle underneath it it will be more seen to the fish than what would you put inside the wing okay and then I take my second bunch of hair do the same brush through make sure this is longer and um, when it comes to proportions here uh, this wing should be approximately 60 70 percent of the total amount of hair I put in so this is way too much so I move my fingers up and I take away if there are shorter strands like this first. Then I look on how much I have and here I need maybe half of what I had or a little more than half. Move my fingers up, look at the tape ring and pull this out. And the more it tapers, the more this tip will swim. Doing flight time classes, I can say that the, the, the most important mis or the, mo the most common mistake people do is not tapering enough, meaning that everything will be the same here and you don't get the good tapering that will make the fly swim. Like that. Okay, but I can now put this on or I can take my hackle and put one of the hackles in before I put the wing on. And I'm going to do this this time. It will be like a mix between a, a, a hackle I wound uh, afterwards or a tied down regular classic hackle. And uh, I'm going to work 
with uh, ostrich feather and uh, like I do with ostrich it's too long maybe a little long the fibers see what I find here I'll do that that's the best um, and I look at this and see uh, how many fibers it is on a part that I'm gonna tie in and since I I here need just a few strands I start by taking this away so I have something to to grab when I'm tying it in and then I look at the fibers which side is best and I would say that this got a nicer side and I just take this away and that gives me fewer fibers on the part of of the feather I tie in meaning it's easier to get it even because one turn then you get more fibers one side than the other here it's easier to tie this in and I can wind it on use support on the finger always when I cut where I need to be accurate I create this little triangle and this is the little triangle I tie in try to tie in do it again tie it in here make sure I work the thread back close to the wing and then I take the hackle and I it's so easy I don't need to double or do anything I can just wind this on and looking on how much fibers I want I would say two turns will be perfect normally is like that if I put three turns on I'm gonna get too much hackles here so what I can do I can just work my fingers and pull this away before I tie it in then it's easier for me to take the thread here we go nothing is easy when you do it like this okay and I put it on tie it in and uh, underneath since I start underneath I end up underneath meaning it's going to be even and then I cut it off work see I have one strand here and I go back looking at this taking this now and just moving these fibers so I get about the same amount of fibers each side and I take one or two turns of thread and tie it down like you do with uh, any hackle if there's one or two strands that are uh, in the middle of the wing it doesn't really matter okay so back to this uh, wing here and I take it look it, at it so it's good normally I don't do this before but here and I put it on look at the tape ring look so I get the very thin end and I tie it in People ask me how much thread to use. I would say I normally use three to six turns. And uh, it's one of the mistakes also uh, to be done is to work more thread than you need. The most important is that you use a very stretchable thread like our, uh, our um, SSS thread and you pull it out, stretch it out and put it on when it's stretched when it's pulled out because then it's going to grab and hold the material uh, cut this off close a few strands here so I can almost do this one time better to be accurate here look at the wing look at the hackling so it's even and it looks fairly good and you can understand how these thin few fibers will move even in the slowest current okay then i take just to pimp it a bit i take a um, peacock a red peacock here it's a rare bird 
that only lives here in my garden or it's died of course it's died just trying to be funny here um, we bleach and we dye these and they you can find these in our packs feather packs they are nice i think to pimp up a fly like this and i look at the fibers so they get to be the same length as my longest strands in the wing and i tie it in and i'm working my thread close to the to the ostrich hackle even right length looking pretty good actually and uh, cut this off a little bit of glue and now you will see my problem here i'm gonna use my dubbing needle instead because this glue here has seen its best days and um, probably coming in one or one of these days what i order i just put a little bit of glue on here and you can see how I work with support all the time because I don't want this to mix with these fibers here then the fly is ruined uh, a couple of jungle cocks um, our substitute is close closer than last time uh, it's not here yet and uh, I really like to show you but um, since we decided it's going to be, it's probably one of our greatest inventions in some years. And we decided to, I was too big, to begin, make a big launch when it's all ready. So I'm saving it. Okay, starting with the jungle cock my side and uh, I will curve it over my finger, form it over my finger. Uh, I can tell you that our substitute coming will be pre-curved and uh, you don't have to do this. You can just take them and put them in, put them on. Start with the feather on my side. Looks like I get the proportions I want. Tie it in with uh, a few turns. Always cut this uh, little edge between uh, I tie them in so I don't get two there. Then I'm I'm tying in extra material that I don't need. Look at the shape of this. Shape it up and uh, put it in. Normally I turn the vise here. It's uh, not as good for me to turn the vise because you. The fly will get out of focus for you. Looking good. Take this, pull, I can pull this back a little bit so it stands out. Before I, oh, where do we go? Here we go. Before I, I uh, cut it off. Okay, here we go. This is now. Uh, like a classic design of a fly with a tied down hackle and a wing with a bit of flash and a, a roof on top but i'm going to add some volume to this and uh, i do it by putting on a soft tackle uh, here and uh, i think it adds to not only uh, motion super soft but it also adds to um to the volume and drop shape of the fly and uh, i prefer all my flies to have the drop shape samurais are longer and slimmer and uh, most of our classics are have this uh, kind of heavy drop shape and uh, also these full flies and these smaller flies I prefer to have the uh, drop shape and I tie it in 
and I move my thread down onto the plastic and uh, this time I'm going to use our uh, hackle plier and I take this and I double this now by holding these uh, fingers back and putting the turns on again close to the other hackles and um, two turns will be probably perfect I hope and the good thing with this is now that our plier is so heavy so I can let go with my hands without this moving on the fly and I can just need a little more thread and I can just tie it in with one or two or three turns here we go make sure all the um, fibers coming one way and I cut this and I actually think it looks good not all flies are becoming good when you tie uh, like this with cameras and people looking and talking and everything okay a small or our smallest micro uh, turbo just to end up press it down hard to the BTT uh, the good thing with this is uh, on other flies they add a bit of weight but these are so the, the micros are so light so the purpose here is to cover up the thread uh, it makes it easy for me to end the fly I don't need to glue it a million times uh, I just take a little tiny bit of glue again I do it on my uh, dubbing needle and I put a little bit in front here you can see this glue has seen its best days take the thread pick up a little bit of glue take the turbo press it down try to do it so you see press it down all the way down I normally do that before I take the thread away take the fly out the device and what I do here I take this and I press down the cone very very hard take it away use support cut it about two mil this is probably two and a half but it will stay and I just hold it up and melt down the little bits tubing here and it's super good it will create a little um, thing that will hold it and perhaps you can see there's a good hole for my leader and the fly is ready this um, is a mobile little uh, pattern uh, as you can see if I compare it with the old ones I pimped it a bit more with the red making it look a little bit more like a black doctor but it's the same fly with a lot of sparkle and a black wing and um, to me full time maybe when you have a little bit of uh, humus in the water or even on the clear river it's a super pattern that's given me many many fish actually my best buddy Hawk and Olin say this is your best pattern I don't know if it means that he's been catching fish on it or not but he really likes it too okay so how do you fish the BTTs you fish them like this with a loose body here this is gonna just be sliding on to the leader and then you can use a tiny little bit of um, medium uh, fits like this to hold your uh, if this will I put it here if this will hold the hook you will have the oops the fluorescent part that I talked about just behind the fly like this but you can also do like this you can if you want it a little bigger you can dress this little 
uh, body and I dress it the same way I, I've done before. Maybe I should also say those of you looking at the cutter and I tell you guys, my, my uh, mailbox is just full of people asking me about the cutter and I've been talking about this cutter so long now so it's embarrassing. And uh, we got cutters uh, and we could have sent you all cutters but there was one thing I did not like about them. Not that they were cutting perfect but uh, they were a bit light meaning that they were not stable enough on your table. So we, uh, it was hard. I can't say I got sleepless nights, but almost. We had to refuse them, uh, meaning that uh, there are new cutters on the way, uh, but I'm so bloody picky that I would actually hate to um, have you get something that you've been waiting long for. That's not perfect. We try to be perfect and um, all our, our uh, producers are crazy about me and saying that I'm too picky but you know I like things to be the way that I think they're perfect. Okay so I take a piece of extra small excess and I put it on uh, and I'll uh, put a little bit of thread onto the part that I've been cutting here. Here I can put some extra th thread on. Here I uh, actually do this a very small little simple um, body. I almost always start by putting some mirage on. Here it's going to be just a few turns, back down, turn it, put it on. The good thing when you work on a fluorescent orange or yellow or green is to, and especially when you have a black thread, is to not uh, have the thread under the mirage because it's going to be seen through when it gets wet. I then take a uh, silver holographic uh, braid of our SSS braid of course and uh, a bit of dubbing I had some black here somewhere I don't know where it here we go tying only one pattern but it still looks crazy with all the material I use glitz on this and again I fish this fly quite a lot for sea trout and uh, meaning sea trout flies are a bit heavier dressed. They are fatter. At least my sea trout flies are fatter. Uh, meaning I don't, even if this is small, I don't pick the dubbing. I do uh, the glitz and I put a little glitz on here. A little bit more. Since it's a quite small fly, I don't need to uh, overdo this but I want it to be fairly fat and I work this down to the no more uh, to the joint between the medium and the extra small and um, it should it should be a little more dubbing in the front here because I want this to taper now I can just take this brush it out and uh, take the uh, silver, put a few turns through, but I can also dress this like I would have done on a bigger fly with a body hackle. Use a regular cox hackle, strip it and tie it in like uh, I do on all body hackles. A few turns. speeding up a bit here so you don't get bored. Starting always with one turn before I take this and I wind it down over the body ending up being four turns. Take my uh, braid, spin it and since this is small I spin quite hard to get it not to be too fat. 
crossing over, pulling the braid uh, down into the dubbing, pulling and uh, twisting this, and um, you know, a good fly should have five turns of ribbing. I think that's bull. I put as many on as I want, and uh, here I do three, double back, cut off, take this away, and uh, the magical brush. Without brushing, a uh, dubbed body does not get the appearance I prefer it to have. I want these fibers to blend in with the hackles and I want uh, it to be translucent and uh, adding both the translucent appearance but also here I got a little bit that I need to take away and like that simple and um, you can end that with just uh, some thread and a bit of glue but you can also oh I forgot it's easier if you have this at an angle it's easier to put the cone on and you slide it down and again this needs to be tight because otherwise the cone will move and uh, it will sooner or later kill the tubing and uh, to my knowledge this is the biggest mistake our competitors do uh, they when they do uh, uh, tubing that is stiff and a cone that's too big a little bit of glue just put a little here and uh, take the thread pull it down one or two turns pull down the cone Cut the thread and pull it, take it out of the vise. Pull it down again so it's tight. Move the fingers, use support and cut it off. And as I did with the fly, I just melt this little thing a little bit to get that edge that will hold the cone. And the cone will protect the thread. A little bit of silver sticking out here, I can Take that away if I don't want it. Here we go. It's because I double back the braid, it's sticking out a little bit, but like that, one or two, two long strands here. Make sure to make it look the way you want. And here is how this will work. I put the fly on to the leader. We get these questions a lot how to fish a BTT or TTT. Put the fly onto the leader, put the, the, the body onto the leader, tie the hook on, put the hook into the orange part here. Our Fitz tubing is flexible, so it will take almost any hook. And when you fish this, this will slide down and it's fished like a body like this. With the big advantage that I can either fish it without you can I can fish it with the small little orange undressed part meaning I get a fly that is less bulky and I can just decide how I want to do this and since I started uh, fishing BTTs and TTTs this is a fantastic advantage I can actually do this with uh, with any color. Let's say I, I, I like a silver body on this, then I put the silver body on. And it, it leaves me being extremely flexible on the river. And that is to me a big advantage. Well, Black Doctor Flush, compared to the old Black Doctor Flush, I would say this is uh, not as good looking fly. I would also actually say that this fly will outfish this fly anytime. And uh, that's what we've been trying to do here in the hunt for the perfect fly to make a fly that would swim better than anything else. 
and uh, will also give an appearance that not only tires but fish like and as always I've been talking way too much but uh, I hope you'd like the tying and um, uh, as normal we do uh, for those of you who want to tie it we do the pattern packs this time coming into uh, one of our small SSS uh, uh, SOS wallets or we do the fly packs and uh, as I said in the last uh, little uh, film we are changing our uh, stickers into being more like a fly sticker instead of the round one and uh, I think they're pretty cool but um, since I do this before <laughs> this is going to be sent out I can't show you but uh, those of you who get the box will get something that is uh, a cooler sticker together with your stuff so hope you like the tying I'm gonna go over to my regular tying desks and I'm gonna keep on tying flies for my Norwegian adventure and uh, I hope I can show you some big fish caught on those flies hope you liked it thank you very much for working here for looking at this and anniversary black doctor 30th film and uh, we actually decided we're gonna do at least one more year so um, you will get more patterns and new stuff and there are quite a few new things happening during this year so I'll I hope you stay tuned on the YouTube or web and keep following us okay so stay strong tie on thank you